don't really see it, but I feel it and I know it. I've got, um, I think it's rope, black rope tied around each wrist and each ankle. Mm -hmm. And I'm being pulled in all different directions. Okay, so I'd like for you to just disconnect from that body and see it. Watch it like a movie. So you'll be able to see the details. What do you envision? I'm in a, a place that's not very well lit. Mm -hmm. And the ropes are attached to some big wooden things. Mm -hmm. Are you male or female? I'm male. Mm -hmm. And it's like there's these big wheels on the side of these things that someone is controlling each one mm -hmm. and they're tightening it. All right. So you'll be able to connect with the minds of those that are controlling it. Let's find out what it is that you, they're doing this for. We need to shut him up. Mm -hmm. To shut him up. And is he talking? No, they're not saying anything. And mm -hmm. I'm hearing one of them say, I'm just doing my job. Mm -hmm. So understanding that they're just doing their job, allow all emotion to be disconnected from the scene so that you can understand it. What's happening? I'm being accused of... I, I'm, I'm hearing witchcraft mm -hmm. and of being a traitor. Mm -hmm. And as the man lying there, connect. Are you a witch? I'm not. Okay. So let's go to the time before you were there. We're going to go back in time before you were in this circumstance. I'm going to count back from three to one. With each number, you'll be going backwards in time to find out a little bit about your life. So we're going now to the place where you live in that lifetime. Three, disconnecting. Two, going back now. And one, be there now. Be at your home. Where are you? I'm in a barn mm -hmm. with horses, and I'm I'm petting a horse and holding its head. And I'm communicating with the horse. Mm -hmm. What's going on with this horse? What's it telling you? I'm comforting it. Mm -hmm. What's happened to the horse? It's frightened. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to comfort it and let it know that it's loved and safe. Mm -hmm. Is this what you do with your animals? Well, this isn't my animal. Mm. Whose animal is this? I do it with everyone's animals mm -hmm. if I have the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So tell me how you feel when you do this. I feel my heart is breaking. What's happened? They work so hard and are mistreated and aren't treated with respect or love. They're treated as though they have no feelings and no emotions and no pain. And they're discarded when they're no longer needed. And I want them to not feel so alone and unloved. And this horse where you are, has someone invited you to be there and speak with it? No. No one knows that that's what I'm doing. I do it on my own and I sneak. So what happens next? What happens? 
gotten caught. I was caught and asked, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm just petting the horses. But the man had overheard me talking. Sometimes I talk out loud and sometimes I talk in my head, but he heard me talking out loud. What happens next? He reported me. And I was being called crazy. I've been called crazy before. How does that affect you when they call you crazy? It used to bother me. Now I don't care. But it's safer to not let them see me talking to the animals. Mm -hmm. So now I'm scared. Now this man who reported you, do you recognize the nicest soul? Look into his eyes. It's my brother. Very good. So I'd like for you to close this scene and let's go to the next significant scene in that life. The next scene that affects you. Be there now. I'm in a room being questioned about my talking to animals and I'm trying to downplay it. But it has escalated from being called crazy to they're suspecting me of being a spy. They're just throwing accusations out there and a witch, a spy, a traitor, a witch, whatever they can use to incriminate me for something. Mm -hmm. They think I'm they think I'm trying to gain access to sensitive information. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm going to do that through their animals, but that's what they're saying. How many are in this room with you? Five. Five. Look at all of their eyes. Do they seem familiar? There is one there that's um, a childhood friend. Mm -hmm. He is, uh, his eyes look very sad mm -hmm. because he doesn't want to do this. But he has to. Mm -hmm. What about the others? Their eyes look very flat and emotionless. Mm -hmm. How does that affect you? My stomach is upset because I feel like my fate is sealed. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to just close this scene and just skip forward to the next important scene. What happens after this? I'm being thrown in a jail cell. There's nothing in it but straw on the floor and there's like a wooden bench. No windows, it's dark. Mm -hmm. Big heavy wooden door with a window with wooden bars on it. And I'm just thrown in there and locked in mm -hmm. until they can decide what to do with me. How old are you now? 26. Mm -hmm. And what do they call you? Harold. Mm -hmm. Harold, do you have any family? 
I don't think it's Harold. I think it sounds like Harold. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can even, I don't, I've never heard the name that like this. It sounds like Harolf, H-A-R-O-L-F. Mm -hmm. Harolf. Right. Does that sound right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Harolf, do you have any family? I have a family that I don't communicate with. Mm -hmm. I think I have a wife. I'd like for you to take a moment now as you're in that jail cell and remember. Remember your family. Who are they? My grandmother was still living at home with my parents. Mm -hmm. My mother is very quiet and a dutiful wife. She agrees with everything my father says because he is the man of the house. Mm -hmm. My father is very strict. You have to do what you're told. Follow tradition, follow rules. And he's all about fitting in. And I never fit in. Harolf, why did you choose that family if you were not going to fit in? I needed to try to open their hearts to more. Were you able to accomplish that? Not with my mother and father, but I think with my grandmother, mm -hmm. I was able to soften her up a little bit. But she was afraid to let anyone know that she loved the way I did. Mm -hmm. So she never took my side. She would talk to me in private, but was afraid my father would put her out. Mm -hmm. And Harold, as you look at all of these in your family, you'll understand why you chose them. And if you have chosen them again, in a different lifetime. Have you chosen those people again? I think so. If not, it's sort of the same scenario. Mm -hmm. To open up people's hearts. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's close this scene and I want you to go to the last moment of your life in that lifetime and I want you to just see it as an observer. I don't want you to be in the body, but see what has happened at the end. Where are you? I'm back with the ropes uh. and I'm crying, but I'm not crying in pain. I'm crying because I don't want to leave the animals behind without me. Mm -hmm. Take your last breath and release their soul from that body. And tell me what happens after you leave. What do you experience? It's like this white light or mist is expanding from every pore of my body, like outward, and then just dissipating, like fog or how does that feel? Very light. Mm -hmm. And as you feel this lightness of your soul, you can look back at that life now. See it for the entirety. See the purpose of it. 
Is there anything else you need to know about that lifetime? I need to know that I tried as hard as I could. I did everything that I could. And not be so hard on myself. I wanted to accomplish more than was possible. Mm -hmm. Can you forgive yourself, Harold? Yes. Very good. So I'd like for you to follow that light and find your guide. I see him. Mm -hmm. Who is he? Santino. Mm -hmm. What does Santino have to say to you? Give me a hug. Mm -hmm. He said, come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So tell me where you go. We went back to that clearing mm -hmm. with the bench. Mm -hmm. So now in that clearing you can discuss that lifetime and how it's affecting the lifetime of Sutton. What is she feeling from that lifetime? I wanted to accomplish so much. I wanted to save it. Everyone, everything. I wanted to save all the animals and save people from themselves. Mm -hmm. It's a noble purpose, isn't it? It's a little much for one. One lifetime <laughs> and one person. Yeah. So how is Sutton feeling from that life? Is she feeling? I still feel heartbroken. Mm-hmm at leaving the animals behind. So being that you're in spirit now, you can connect with those animals. So I'd like for you to connect with those animals that you were trying to assist. And I'd like for them to meet you there where you are. And connect with them. And see what they have to say now. They loved me so much. The horses, the dogs, mm -hmm. cats, even wild animals. Did they understand? Did they put themselves through that pain for a reason? This one horse in particular is saying they chose this to give these people the opportunity to show love and kindness. Mm -hmm. It was an opportunity for them to serve and not question. Mm -hmm. So now understanding that, how does that make you feel? He said it was not your responsibility mm -hmm. to take on everyone else's lesson. Mm -hmm. what, did they, what advice do they give to Sutton about her wanting to do the same thing? She does it with animals and people. Yeah. I'm hearing once again you're trying to save the world. Mm -hmm. Is that her responsibility? I feel like it is. Mm -hmm. What do the animals say? They're saying the same thing again. It's not my responsibility that they appreciate my love and kindness that I can be loving and kind without doing anything physical 
or financial. Mm -hmm. Very good. So I'd like to ask, does Sutton have any spirit guides that are animals? They're already with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have this huge elephant with me. There's a black panther. There's a bear. There's so many animals peeking out of the forest around the bench, mm -hmm. standing there watching. So I'd like for you to connect with all of them. Why have they brought you to this clearing today? What do they need you to know? As a collective. They want to honor me for my efforts, for animal kind, to tell me that my love is more powerful than than I know. How does that make you feel? Really good. Mm -hmm. So let's find out how this all began. How this journey of trying to save the world all began in this lifetime. I'd like for you to just go ahead and pick the guide that will take you to the moment in which you were planning the lifetime of this current lifetime of Sutton. So I'm going to count from five to one. And as I do, I'd like for you to go ahead to the place of the planning. Let's begin now on five, traveling through time and space with them. Four, to the halls of planning. Three, connecting with your guides. Two, looking all around. And one, be there now. What is this place? It's sort of like a room, except it's outside, almost like a pavilion with pillars in it, and it looks like marble. Mm -hmm. Everything is very light and airy, and the table looks marble. It feels marble, mm -hmm. but yet you can see through it. Look down and see your feet. What do your feet look like in this place? My feet look blue. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the rest of you. How do you represent yourself as a body in this place? I have long, thin um, feet and legs and ankles, and I'm wearing a like a white tunic or something mm -hmm. with like a sash around my middle. Mm -hmm. Are you female or male or genderless? I think I'm genderless. Mm -hmm. What does your face look like? Do you have a face? I'm all blue mm -hmm. and I'm very narrow my whole body, my body looks sort of human, mm -hmm. except blue, and, but my f face is narrow and almost like a diamond shape mm -hmm. and pointed in the front. And I don't see hair. I have ears that are very close to the sides of my head. I have features like a human, mm -hmm. just a, a narrow shaped face, body and head, long thin arms, long thin fingers. I have three long fingers and one thumb. 
there's this gold it looks almost like one of those big gold Egyptian like flat necklaces that's mm -hmm. sort of what it looks like what is the purpose of this necklace I think it's just an adornment mm -hmm. and around my head is this thin uh, gold it's not a crown but it, it's what it makes you think of mm -hmm. but it's very thin and it comes down over my forehead but the top of my head is exposed it's like a band mm -hmm. and are you alone in this place or no who's there with you there's seven others mm -hmm. do they look like you some some do and some don't what do the others look like one has a head almost like an elephant mm -hmm. we're all dressed pretty similar with like these tunics mm -hmm. with our legs exposed one looks like a, a, a man with a rhinoceros head and then some are blue like me what do these people represent to you who are they these are my brothers mm -hmm. are you equal to them N yes and no tell me about that yes when I'm when I'm with them but no not when I'm I'm um, planning my next excursion okay I don't have much of a say in that mm -hmm. all right so let's find out about this next excursion that you'll be taking and let's see what the conversation is what is the plan what is the purpose Well, it appears I'm trying to bite off an awful lot to chew again. And I'm... It's, it's funny, it's almost like I'm in, being encouraged to go for it, but yet don't bite off more than you can chew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is it that you're trying to accomplish in this next excursion? What do you want to learn or do? I'm hearing heal, heal, mm -hmm. heal myself, heal others, heal everything I touch. Do you come with any talents or skills? I'm hearing what talent do you not have? Mm. So which one of these talents will you be using the most? I'm hearing love. Mm -hmm. But I have to learn love first and I'm learning. Is there something that prepares you before you take this excursion? I had to learn what no love felt like. Mm -hmm. Where did you learn that? Many lives. Mm -hmm. Many lives of no love. To feel the pain and heartbreak so that I would know the difference and how it felt so that I would feel compassion. Mm -hmm. So in this lifetime that you'll be living as Sutton, are you going to also be in the same situation of no love? Sutton has known no love mm -hmm. for a long time. And now she's starting to feel it mm -hmm. from animals and from some people. Why did she choose to be in that situation so difficult again? 
She still didn't understand love yet. Mm -hmm. She still struggles with feeling it from someone else. Mm -hmm. She's getting there. So during this meeting with all of her brothers who are counseling her, does she choose the challenges? and those who will be in her life? Or is that chosen for her? Some of it she chose and some of it we chose it for her. Uh huh. So which are the things that were chosen from her that she didn't have any say? We choose the timing. Mm-hmm. When she feels she's ready for something, sometimes she's not. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes she doesn't feel she's ready, and she is. So we had to choose the timing. We still choose the timing. One of the things that she is dealing with the most is friends, family, not feeling that she's part of anything, not being accepted. This is all part of a grand plan. Mm. What is this grand plan? Why does she have to go through that feeling so alone? But it has to learn that it's okay to be alone. She has her animals, mm -hmm. and she's never really alone. She struggles with this because she thinks she needs someone. Mm -hmm. Everyone that she would love has been taken from her. Separated from her. This is a time of introspection. Mm -hmm. will, be she, will she be reuniting once again? When it's time. She will be reunited with her twin. Mm -hmm. Why is it that they were separated? He was here to help her. He's here to give her the support she felt she didn't have, and the love from a human. He loves her like the innocence of an animal, mm -hmm. unconditionally. It's the only love that she trusts. Mm -hmm. So on one hand, she judges it, but yet cherishes it. So what advice would you like to give her about this relationship now? She is learning to accept it as it is. Mm -hmm. And it is just pure innocent love. Mm -hmm. But she's afraid that time is running out. Money is running out. Time is running out. Everything. We remind her there is no time. Mm -hmm. There is no hurry. There is no rush. Where is this fear coming from? Is this coming from this lifetime or others? She feels she has squandered this time in unnecessary relationships. Mm -hmm. But every one of those were necessary in her growth. Mm -hmm. She felt that it was time she could have spent learning and healing and healing others. But the most important healing was herself. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you sent her 
to remind her that she's on this path. She gets so many reminders. Mm -hmm. Does she recognize? She's starting to. Mm -hmm. Which is the one that she sees the most? She gets messages and songs and mm -hmm. numbers, license plates, mm -hmm. billboard signs. What do those numbers and songs mean? Some of them are self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. What about the numbers? The 234, two, for example. What's that all about? 234, she's taking the right steps. Okay. So when she sees that, it's her, it's her indication that it's okay? It's not just okay, it's applause. Ah. Two, three, four, and she's stepping up instead of four, three, two. It's two, three, four. Okay. She's stepping up. What about when she sees one, two, three, four? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Good. Now, in that lifetime that you showed her, she was on this rack being pulled in all directions for speaking to the animals. Is that pain that she experienced in that lifetime reflecting now in her body? Yes, in her feet, mm -hmm. hands, wrists. Mm -hmm. Why does she need to bring all of that pain with her in this lifetime? She doesn't need she, it. She doesn't need it. So now that she understands where it's coming from, is she ready to release it? She is. Okay. Is there something that she's holding inside of her that would keep her from releasing it? Does she need to forgive herself? She needs to release the fear. Mm-hmm. The guilt and the heartache. All right, and where is that located in her body? She has to keep saying, my heart is breaking for this, for that, because she is hurting her own heart. Mm -hmm. And she's holding the pain in her feet because she feels she's not taking enough steps forward. Mm -hmm. She feels she is stuck in place and her wrists because she tries to hold on and control situations and make it turn out right. Mm -hmm. And there is no control. So her heart, wrists, hands and feet is where she's holding this. All right. So let's begin now with her feet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shake up the feet and let's bring all of that up into her body. Bring it up, shake it out. No more holding, bring it all the way up. You have your hands, and let's release all of that from your hands, and let's bring it up, and let's touch now your heart, and let's see what's in that heart. What do you see holding in that heart? Fear. All right. So I'd like for you to go ahead and open up that heart. Crack it open. I opened it a little. Mm-hmm. Crack it open even more. What's holding it? What shell do you have around it? It feels like there's hands mm -hmm. pulling it shut. All right. So go ahead and take those hands and loosen them up and give me that fear that you've been holding. Almost like a vacuum. Pulling it up from the feet. Pulling it up from the hands. And let's begin to release that fear. Putting it in my hands. Sending it to the universe for healing. And tell me what's happening. 
I'm feeling lighter. Mm -hmm. Keep pulling it out. Keep pulling it out. Vacuum it out. And tell me when it's done. It's done. Very good. Let's take all of that. Send it into the universe. And let's look and see if there's any guilt being held in there. Yeah. All right. Where is that being held? That's in here. All right. So let's begin pulling out that guilt. Let's just find out where that guilt is coming from. I'd like for you to follow that guilt. Follow it all the way back. Follow it all the way back. That's where it felt, but I think it's going into my stomach. Mm-hmm. Keep following it. It's in my stomach. Mm-hmm. That pit. Mm-hmm. So let's find out what's in that stomach. And as I move that energy around, I'd like for you to follow that guilt and tell me what you see. This is black. It's black. It's very dark. And mm -hmm. I'm hearing grief. Mm -hmm. Grief. Follow the grief. Follow the grief. What images do you see? I see crying. Mm hmm Of everything. Mm hmm People, faces. Mm hmm Sad, sadness, mm -hmm. animals, just everywhere. Why have you pulled all of that grief with you? I wanted to fix them. Mm -hmm. I wanted to help them. And I don't think I was able to help as much as I wanted to. Mm -hmm. So are you using that grief as a punishment? Are you holding on to it? It's a reminder. Mm -hmm. Do you need that reminder in order to love? No. No. Are you ready to release it? Yes. Pull it up. Pull it up. We're going to bring it up, 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 up. And feel it in your heart being pulled up. Pull it all the way up. Almost like a pinching, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. All of that. It's almost spiny. Like a stabbing. Mm-hmm. I feel it. Pull it all the way up. You don't need all of that pinching you. Like thorns. Pull it all the way up. Release it. Tell me when I have it all. You have it. Very good. Let's take it all and send it to the universe for healing. And now let's take a look. Is that heart ache still there? There's still something mm -hmm. that feels heavy. All right, let's find it. Where is it? It's still here. Mm -hmm. Like there's a weight sitting on me. Alright, so let's find that weight. And I'd like for you to just follow the weight. Follow it to its origin. Where is that weight coming from? It goes down into both wrists and mm -hmm. hands. Alright. I'd like for you to see the image of the origin of that weight. Like my hands are clenched mm -hmm. in really hard fists. Mm -hmm. See yourself. See the images. Male or female? It's a female. Mm -hmm. See the clothing. See the place. Why are the wrists clenched? She's filled with rage. Mm hmm. Rage. She's wearing a brown, like wool dress, mm -hmm. shapeless. Mm -hmm. And her hair is brown and long and messy. Let's find out more about this life. I'd like for you to connect and let's find what this rage is all about. What is this rage all about? She 
She has she has lived a life of pain, mm -hmm. abuse, and felt powerless. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Let's find the story. I'm going to count from five back to one, and let's find out all about her story. You'll be able to see it in whole and understand this life. Five. Begin to scan this lifetime. Four. Understanding. Three. Seeing the pictures. Two. And one. Be there completely. She was taken away from her mother when she was little. Mm -hmm. they, they, they killed her mother. And she was forced into a life of servitude. And no real kindness. Mm -hmm. No real kindness. What is the end of that lifetime? How did she die? She was strangled. Strangled by a man in the, in the street. She had to... Um, I think it, she was washing clothes in this big, huge, it looks like a cauldron, but like a huge pot that was boiling over water. And she was washing either clothes or linen or something. And she wasn't working fast enough or something. And he was shouting at her and she spoke back. And so he beat her, and she was going to try to fight back, and he began strangling her. Take a look into his eyes and see if you recognize those eyes in the lifetime of Sutton. It looked like my father. Mm -hmm. And as I'm telling this, my whole shoulders and neck keeps tensing up, and mm -hmm. I have to keep trying to make mm -hmm. myself relax. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to go ahead and speak to this woman now. Connect with her soul. Can she forgive herself for that life? She said yes. She mm -hmm. had no choice. Mm -hmm. Why did she pick that lifetime? To live in servitude with so much hopelessness? Because she had lived on the other side. Mm -hmm. She had forced others into servitude and showed no kindness. Mm -hmm. Is she ready now to disconnect from that pain? Yes. Good. So I'd like for you to go ahead and release her with love. And take a look at your own body and see what has that done. Well, I don't feel that heavy, heavy mm -hmm. on my chest. Mm -hmm. Scan your body and see how it feels now. Your wrists, your heart, your feet. How does the body feel now? Much lighter. Mm -hmm. What would make your body feel even better? If I could learn to relax. Mm -hmm. So let's see what's keeping you from relaxing. Let's find what it is that you're holding on to keeps you on your toes. Go ahead and begin now to follow that tension. Find it in your body. If 
find it in your soul. Where is that tension coming from? There's something like wrapped around my right shoulder blade. All right. I'd like for you to describe what it is that's wrapped around. What do you describe it as? It looks like a, a looks like a brown leather strap. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to focus on that brown leather strap. And I'm going to get back to one. As I count five to one, I'm going to have you go into that lifetime with that brown leather strap. Five. Begin now through traveling through time and space as you focus on that strap. Four. Drifting into that lifetime now. Three two, and one. Be there now. Seeing a small furry animal. Mm-hmm. Look at your body. What do you look like? It makes you think of a groundhog. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's what it is, but that's what it makes you think of. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have as long of a tail little hunched body, mm -hmm. furry brown. What's happening right now? Where are you? I'm eating grass. Mm -hmm. Are you by yourself? Or are there others like you around? It's just me. How do you feel? I feel at peace. Mm -hmm. Eating grass, feeling the breeze and the sunshine. What happens next? I have to listen for noises. But this one time, I was busy listening to the wind and eating the grass and enjoying the sunshine. And a human came up behind me and startled me, but I didn't run fast enough and speared me in my back. For my pelt, my fur. And that was that. Did this human strap you up? No, but that is where the blades seem to go in. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you That's to that. connect. Connect with this little animal. And ask this little animal if it will forgive this human for not knowing that you had feelings. Yeah. And I'd like to ask, why is it that Sutton is carrying this memory? Why does she need it in this lifetime? She doesn't so much now. Mm -hmm. But she used to need it as a reminder. 
Mm-hmm. To be very careful. And it served her well, didn't it? It did. Mm-hmm. So are we re- really to release this now? Yes. Now that she can be at peace and not have to move too fast to avoid others? Yes. All right. Did some of this also make her wary of the humans? Yes. Mm-hmm. So let's disconnect and let's allow that lifetime to just drift off, not needing it, thanking this little animal, reminding her to be careful, but now she doesn't need that any longer. She can enjoy the wind, enjoy her food, and not be worried that she's going to be attacked. So I'd like for you now to release in your shoulder any remnants. It's gone. Very good. And now that we have released all of these things from your heart, from your solar plexus, from your hands, from your feet, from your chest, and your shoulder, I'd like for you to use a light that can seal that area, can transform it into a place of love. What light do you represent? It's a white light. White. So I'd like for you to go ahead and begin shooting that white light and filling all of these spaces that were once filled with memories of other lifetimes holding you back. Feel your feet, your hands, your wrists, your solar plexus, your chest, your heart, your shoulder. Fill it all with white light. And tell me how that feels. I feel complete. Very good. It feels like it filled in holes. Mm, good. Now, one of the questions that Sutton had was about her diet. Why is it that she can't stick to a diet? Why does she have this food addiction? She's trying to fill herself with that that she does not think she has. Mm -hmm. So what can we do to fill her now? To where she doesn't have to go to food. Love. We love. need to fill her with love. Okay. So what color do you represent represent with love? What color is used for love? For yeah. her, we'll yeah. use pale violet. Wonderful. So I'd like for you to go ahead and begin seeing that violet coming in through the top of your crown. Connect strongly with it. And just feel your entire essence, your physical body and your etheric body being filled with this beautiful light. And as it spreads to the etheric body, that will be the template to remind her that she's holding all of this love within her. That she doesn't need to fill her tummy with food where she can actually bring in this light to remind her each time of the love that she has within her. And tell me when that has been completed. It is complete. Very good. And now that we have filled her with love and with this beautiful white light, How is her meditating going to be in the future? For a while, it's going to be a challenge finding Mm -hmm. time and space. Mm -hmm. But soon she'll have lots of time. Wonderful. And when she has all of this time, what will she be doing with this time? What can she do? She wants to fulfill her dream, manifest it. 
What can she do? She will be learning, but in the meantime, she feels that she is accomplishing nothing. She is always accomplishing something. Mm -hmm. Every day. So she needs to be more like that little groundhog? Enjoying the breeze? She needs to learn to enjoy the breeze. Mm -hmm. So who can help her with that? Her dragon can help her. Mm -hmm. Her dragon can help her with anything she needs. Okay. Can the dragon please step forward now? And address Sutton? Certainly. Mm -hmm. What message would this dragon like to help her with today? What message would you like to say to a sister? in the future. Sutton needs to start asking for help. Mm -hmm. All she needs to do is ask. She already knows I'll help her with anything. But yes, she'll say, what can I ask? I don't know what to ask. Anything. I am here for her. Can the dragon assist her with relationships? She wants the relationships to change, but right now that is exactly how it needs to be. All right, good. We know she wouldn't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. But she already suspected this much. Mm -hmm. So within her, she feels like she cannot forgive herself after these exercises that we've done now. Does she understand a little bit better? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does she need to forgive herself? Or is she complete right she now? She still needs to forgive more. Mm -hmm. So where is she hiding all of these things that are tucked away? She's hiding a lot in her stomach. Mm -hmm. So let's bring that in energy up. Bring that energy up. And let's begin to see Visualize all of those things that she cannot forgive herself for. And I want you to see it from a different point of view. I want you to see it from that point of view of that blue being that was planning the lifetime of Sutton. And as you see it from that perspective, Let's begin to understand why these things occurred in her life. Some of the things that Sutton did as a child that she doesn't want to let go mm -hmm. were contracts. Mm -hmm. Show her the contracts now. I have shown her. Mm -hmm. Some needed to experience certain things that were not pleasant. Mm -hmm. She had to be the one. She also needed to experience it. She needed the guilt for a while so that she could improve her performance as a loving human. Mm -hmm. and she has. It was a learning tool. She no longer needs it. Mm -hmm. Or she does not do those things anymore. Mm -hmm. Why did she choose this family that despised her? Was this a contract? Yeah. It was. was. Will they ever get together? 
Or is the contract over? There's no need for them to be together. All right. There may be some small interactions, mm -hmm. but that is it. So let's do a ceremony now to break the contract of what she needed to learn with this family. I'd like for you to go ahead and see all of these family members before you, whether they're alive in body or not. And each one of you has a contract in your hand. And I'd like for you to go ahead and see all of their hearts, their true hearts. And understand what the contract was with each one. As you look at each one, understand what it is about them that you needed to learn from. And when you feel that you have now understood what your contract was, let's take a moment to break that contract. I'd like for you to go ahead and see what happens to all of them. Well, their demeanor changed. Mm -hmm. Feel them now. What does it feel like? Well, I feel like they're high-fiving me. Very good. Very good. And now that we understand their relationship, you can go ahead and disconnect from them, knowing that this was just a play. This was just a production that you created in order to learn from a different level. But there's one right now that's very important, and that's Indy. What is the contract that you have with Indy? Why is Indy in this lifetime? Hearing I am your support system. Mm -hmm. Very good. I am your mirror. Mm -hmm. Very good. I am here to help you understand yourself. to show you why you are so hard to understand. Mm -hmm. Do you accept this from Indy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. And now that we understand the contracts and understand what had happened, I'd like to understand why it is that Sutton came all the way here. What did she need to know today? What was the message? Sutton needs to know that she's about to embark on a journey. Mm -hmm. She feels that she's been on one from the start, and she has. For it is time for her to, instead of taking steps to start taking leaps and bounds, and that is why she feels time is running out. She doesn't feel prepared. Is she prepared? In some ways, yes. Mm -hmm. In some ways, no. But she will be. It's all in the timing. It's all in the timing. Mm -hmm. Very good. Is she ready to accept that mission that was given to her by her brothers to give her the timing? No, mm -hmm. she doesn't think she's ready. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to lead. She doesn't want to follow. But she is already leading by example mm -hmm. for some, for those who are ready. And she will continue to do so. Wonderful. Wonderful. And now that she has received that message, is there anything else that she needs to know here today before she comes back? 
some of the things that she wanted to know I'm not telling her mm -hmm. because she could interfere very good ego mm -hmm. and fear and it needs to unfold on its own wonderful is that all are we complete we are complete very good so before we come back I'd like to have Sutton join me in a prayer that my good friend Tabash says and the prayer is this from the Lord God of my being and you can repeat Lord it God of my being. I empty myself I empty myself mind body and spirit mind body and spirit of all that limits me of all that limits me of all I am attached to of all I'm attached to that does not serve me that does not serve me of all I am addicted to of all I'm addicted to that does not profit me that does not profit me I ask for forgiveness I ask for forgiveness from all the people I have hurt from all the people I have hurt in my life in my life in any life in any life in any way at all in any way at all I forgive all those who have hurt me I forgive all those who have hurt me in my life in my life in any life in any life in any way at all in any way at all and I forgive myself and I forgive myself for all the ways I have hurt myself for all the ways I have hurt myself for all the times I did not pay attention for all the times I did not pay attention in my life in my life in any life in any life in any way at all in any way at all and now I choose to be at peace and now I choose to be at peace always always in all ways in all ways so be it so be it very good wow <coughs> wow <laughs> pretty good huh these things felt like they were burning the palms of my hands. <laughs> well, let's switch them up. <laughs> All that energy you're putting through them. Yeah. <laughs> wow, how do you feel? That was intense, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I felt like I was on fire. Amazing. How does your body feel? It's tingling all over. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I could just curl up in a little ball and just sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you went through a lot of different lifetimes. Did it all make sense to you? Yes, yes, it did. Oh my God, that life where I was being stretched out. Yeah. I have such horrible problems with my wrists and you, my feet. You had. <laughs> now you understand why. Yeah. Yeah. Are you afraid of speaking out? I have had um, a surgery, a partial thigh procedure, where they amputated half of my baby toes to try to eliminate pain. That didn't work. Imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> Again, doing stuff to your feet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. It all made sense to me. Yeah. I mean, I have braces that I wear to bed every night, and if I don't, my hands fall asleep. How do your hands feel now? They feel good. Do you, you realize why they fall asleep? They were yeah, tied. Yeah, and, and, and hanging on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of lifetimes. Right, and you know that um, the pain in my, my heart and chest area, mm -hmm. uh, just a couple days before getting here and last night, and even on the way here, I was feeling chest pains. How's your chest feel now? Good. And you know, on the way here, I took a picture of a dragon in the clouds. Isn't that that's, wild? That's your, that's your dragon? Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. How long do you think this was? How did it feel to you? Yes, maybe an hour, mm. hour and 15 minutes. Yeah. An yeah. hour, yeah, an hour, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Yeah. You did fabulous. That was very cool. Very cool. So you want to share some of this? Oh, you can share it. Yeah. Yeah. 
because it had a lot of interesting things that make a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, if it, if it helps someone, yeah. yeah. So Sutton, we did really good today. <laughs> yes, we did. Yeah. yeah. We did. So um, tell everybody, you've been hypnotized before. I have. Yes. So did it differ from other hypnosis sessions? It did. I felt like I went super deep and I was so relaxed. <laughs> this so, was an awesome experience. So what did you get from it? Because you came here feeling that you had all this chronic pain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I've had a lot of chronic pain. And, um, oh my God, it made perfect sense. Uh, when you it, saw yourself. Yeah, the, the past lives and what I went through and what I was holding on to and why I was holding on to it. And, mm -hmm. and I look forward to feeling better after letting it go. Yeah, we let a lot go today. Yeah. Yeah. So how far did you travel? I traveled here from Kentucky. Mm. We're in Miami right now. And the reason I'm kind of looking down is my cat is giving me <laughs> his paw, <laughs> wanting attention. <laughs> and um, Sutton communicates with animals. Yeah. So you can imagine what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> he wants attention. He does. Yeah. So this was an interesting session. And uh, would you recommend it to other people? Oh, I've already recommended it before yeah? I even got here. Wonderful. I have. Yeah. And you have said you were trying to get this session for a while now. Three years. Three years. I tried to get it when it was closer to me. Yeah. And uh, then when I saw it was here in Miami, I thought, oh, it's probably going to be booked. I clicked on it. It was open. And I thought, oh, no, I don't want to go to Miami. <laughs> I thought it was going to be much more stressful. It was very easy. Good, good. So you can see that when it's ti the, the divine timing, you're going to be here. Yes. Yeah. What if you would have come here before? You think you would have been ready? No. Oops. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> now he's biting. <laughs> Hopefully that was a love bite. <laughs> I'll have to bring him up so people can see see my cat. <laughs> this is Tashi. <laughs> he's such a beautiful kitty. So yeah, it's all divine timing. So if you would like to have a session yourself, just go to my website, albawyman.com. Go to the newsletter page. It tells you when the next newsletter is coming out and that's when you can subscribe. And then um, I also um, send this newsletter out about once a month. So go ahead and subscribe and uh, you gotta be really fast. Keep trying. Keep trying. And I also do events all around the world. So if you would like to join me in one of my gatherings, please do. He, he wanted attention. Now he doesn't want attention. Right. <laughs> and uh, I hope I see you at one of my gatherings. So I hope you enjoyed this session. I certainly do. It's a, wow, it was really, really vivid. And yeah. I love those. So um, thanks for joining me until the next time. Bye. <laughs>